moved on to Queen Elizabeth National Park and another research project. Here, cycling is the most economical form of transport, unfortunately for us. Also, I like my car home better. I have no brakes. I so unfit. I wouldn't last a second in the bush. We were on the lookout for a pack of banded mongooses, the friendliest mongoose species. Fortunately, one of them had already been radio collared, so finding the group was fairly simple. OK, so this is where we have to be a bit more careful. We're not around the lodge now, we're in the bush, and you just have to be alert and be aware that there are buffaloes and hippos and other things, so let's keep the eyes and ears open while we're here. Emily O'Tali and Jason Gilchrist are trying to build up a picture of mongoose behaviour, concentrating on their breeding habits and how living near humans is affecting them. This will provide important new scientific information about the species. Hey, they are here. Hello. This is 54, otherwise known as Funny Face. <laughs> These guys are they're very friendly. They're very used to us. Mm. What I'm doing now is called the monk call, right. which is a vocalisation we make to the mongooses just to relax them, ah, to let okay. them know that it's us and they don't have to fear. How many different sounds do they have? They've got um, quite a wide vocal repertoire. I mean, we've got a list of about, probably about 10, 15 vocalisations. Yeah. And that's just simplistically, that's just that's by our ear. Hear, They've probably yeah. got a hell of a lot more in their vocabulary yeah. that we can't detect. What we do is, yeah. Research is a slow process. Detailed notes need to be made about the interaction between the individual mongooses. I've been at school this. The next thing. <laughs> I'm looking at the effect of refuse feeding on their mm. behaviour and survival. And Jason is looking at their reproductive system is interested in sex yeah. and babies. Yeah. I'm not interested in That's that. Yeah. Typical male. <laughs> the interesting thing about bandy mongooses is that they are cooperative breeders, mm -hmm. which means that animals which aren't parents help to rear the young ones in mm -hmm. the pack. There tends to be a hierarchy in the mating. Dominant females mate first, uh -huh. subordinate females mate a few days later, but they all give birth on the same day, normally. Wow. Uh, it's very interesting, actually. I don't yeah. think there's a, any other species that do that. Yeah, that's why I'm here. That's why you're here. <laughs> to identify new mongoose pups, they need to be caught and tagged, so we had to prepare some bait, something nice and smelly. You have to wash the rice. I'll wash the rice, yeah. She said very quickly because she realised she's never seen one of those things before. They are we were preparing Emily's special recipe. It's a change from the regular diet of beetles and bugs. That one? Did you put salt? Salt? Do they want salt as well? <laughs> Naturally, the salt should help the water boil faster. Yeah. It's not we. Yeah. Gosh. These are small people. <laughs> That's the fish. Yeah. Very good. How's it going in wasteland? All right. It's going to take a bit of while. Oh, special one. Oh, wow. Put some effort into it, Steve. Right. The fish makes this mongoose meal a special treat. It's stirred into the rice lovingly by hand. OK, let's add a couple of eggs just to uh, make it completely Oh, resistant. do they eat the shells as well? Um, they'll eat anything, yeah. Mm -hmm. Armed with fresh bait and traps, we set off to catch young pups who hadn't yet been marked for identification. This particular group live near the tourist lodge and so weren't frightened of people. So basically, you're going to be handed the end of a piece of string, mm -hmm. um, and when the animal we want goes in the trap, Emily will say no, and then you pull the string, wham, the door shuts, and we have ourselves a mongoose. Right, very good. Mm. But, um, There's ten mongoose well. packs involved in the research, but most mm. groups were too wild for us to go anywhere near. Not this group, though. They loved company. Oh, my God. <laughs> If they do they'll nibble, just, they won't bite, don't worry, they'll just, just be nibbling. Okay, that's fine. Emily's friend, Effie, he's yeah. the only mongoose in the history of the Bandy Mongoose Project to attack an observer. So okay. you're maybe not wearing the right footwear for him. That's fine. So just watch him. Yeah. Okay, I think we should sit up here, because he's not going to let us go any further. Calm down. Come, boys. Okay, this pack scavenged for leftovers at the lodge and on rubbish dumps. Emily is trying to find out how this affects their breeding rate and social behaviour. I wasn't expecting them to actually crawl in and out of the traps as we um, as we laid them. This is probably, of all the research um, animals that we've been working with, they're probably the most amenable. Of course, the animals we want are not the animals that are walking straight into the trap. The reason we're string trapping is to try and get the more difficult animals. Yeah. We want the pups that don't have ear tags and aren't shaved. That's yeah. fine. So that we can uh, remark them and then identify them. OK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, Trudy, you're now on this trap, oh, okay, this, so you this... can have the string. No, oh, thank you. Okay. It's a bit like fishing. A taut line and a lot of waiting for the right nibble. 
The skill is making sure the others aren't blocking the door when you pull the string. Okay, hang on. I think basically, Steve, when you get an opening, just yeah. give them the clap and then go for the, the shot. There's one pop without an ear tag in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. There's one animal in this trap that we're after, the unmarked pup, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're going to put a bag over the top yeah. and then get our animal in the bag and then we can release the other two. In that theory. sounds very simple. In how is he going to do that? Well, what do, why do I need the gloves? Just in case he decides to take a snap at you when you put your hand down. That's why you're wearing the gloves. <laughs> and I'm holding the bag. OK. So we tighten the bag. OK. I'm and right. so what you'll do is, when I say the word, you just say, bring your, your, okay, your glove see. down like yeah, this, okay. just to stop him coming All right, back. I see. OK. This is not the one we want. OK, we've now got all three. That's not quite what we intended. No, oh, go back. Come on, guys. Let's play the game. Puffy. OK, go. Well, and these guys, we can go and release. OK. At last, there was some veterinary work for us to get our teeth into before they could get their teeth into us. When dealing with mongoose, it's wise to use sedation. Sometimes you just have to, you know, yeah. touch them and they scream. Other times you can actually be very rough with them and they, yeah. they sit quite happily. Mm -hmm. They are noisy beasts, as you yeah. pointed out well, earlier. It's, it's very similar to guinea pigs. Guinea pigs, as soon as you touch them, it's like fire engines. Yeah. It's, you know, they're really, really vocal. A lot of these small furries are, so... OK, so here we have one anaesthetised pup. Yeah. yeah. Worked very well. OK, so what we do with the mongooses is we make various measurements yeah. along the way and then we mark so that we can mm -hmm. identify them in the field. Yeah. OK, so hind foot length is 53.6 head width. Now, we used to do this on the youngsters when mm -hmm. they were awake. We didn't anaesthetise them. And at this point, I'd have the, this guy seriously trying to take my finger out whilst yeah. I'm trying to measure his head width. 31.4. So this is animal T3. Yeah. So we check our colour collar list for this pack. Yeah. We find T3. He has a right ear tag, yeah. yellow and yellow. So ah, right, OK, so a double yellow. And we also check the shave marking. You can see he has an eye shaved on the back. Just a line? Mm -hmm. Just a line. Oh, I thought it was going to get some more challenging well, stuff. Well, maybe next time. Trap lines, yeah. <laughs> oh, where's the switch? Ah, the switch. <laughs> Can't get the start. Uh, the switch is there. Ah. Uh, you know, I'm running now. Can't cook, but she can cook here. <laughs> if she can find the switch. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the reason we do both is because, one, the hair grows back on the shaving, yeah, and yeah. they also tend to drop the ear tags, right, and so we yeah. go for yeah, the so. double. Yeah. It's just like an ear piercing for humans, and the sedated mongoose doesn't feel a thing. I suppose this is the uh, mongoose equivalent of alien abduction. There was a bright light! <laughs> <laughs> Complete with new earrings and haircuts, we set off to return them to their family. This is actually the day after we trapped these two mongooses and they recovered overnight. I've been bitten and we're going to go and release them to the pack, which we believe is around here. Watch, watch Effie. You've, you've got your bits on here. Yeah. The pups are out in seconds and mixing with the group. So they get a little bit upset at the first part of release, but yeah. they've already relaxed and yeah. they're interested in food rather than yeah. getting upset. It's OK, you're fine. It's really good. Mm. Like, you reinforce this as a positive thing by giving them food. Yeah. I do not know which of them that bit me. I was just a bit silly and put my finger through the cage. And there's something very sharp in there, I'll tell you. Me and rodents, eh? Well, these are not rodents, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the rodent comment. <laughs> Before leaving Uganda, we headed for Gwindi National Park to fulfill a lifelong ambition. Both Steve and I were desperate to get a closer look at the famous mountain gorillas. Quite sensibly, in... Uh...